ओके हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम्स टू ऑल इन अनदर वीडियो बिलोंग्स टू फेमस एक्सपेरिमेंट्स इन फिजिक्स दैट इज योर डाविसन जर्मर एक्सपेरिमेंट व्हिच इज हेल्ड इन 1927 विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट वेव नेचर ऑफ ए पार्टिकल और मैटर हैज बीन कंफर्म इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इलेक्ट्रॉन इज कंसीडर्ड एज पार्टिकल okay so now we are going to discuss in detail about experimental arrangement of this davison jormer experiment and the results and how that those results are analyzed and concluded that wave nature of the particle in detail in this video okay so let's starts so before where we are going to go for the uh, experimental results and discussion first we are going to discuss about the basic historical idea about wave particle duality we know that around in the year 1600 to 1650 light is accepted worldwide as wave and considering the wave nature of the light many physical phenomenon were explained such as diffraction interference polarization etc these things happens in in this era in 1600 to 17 1700 that means light is accepted as fully wave nature right but according to sir isaac newton light is considered as corpuscular nature or particle nature so in that era two ideas that means light is particle light is wave two ideas or philosophies are always contradicted with each other but in early 1900 according to max planck without experimental evidence he has been considered or given the law that light is consist of wave packets or bundle of energy packets or quantized packets which is established in that in that time in early 1900 that means he accepted or uh, he given the planck's law that light is also considered as a bundle of packet or quantized packet or one type of a particle right the wave particle duality now at In 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 that era, in in 1900, around early of 1900, again the part, wave particle duality has been came into the picture with higher contradiction, higher contradiction. But the this wave particle duality concept has been fully established when. when photoelectric effect has been explained when photoelectric effect has been explained by uh, by einstein in 1905 right so wave particle duality concept has been fully established fully established means the light has both particle nature and wave nature that means wave particle duality okay fully established when photoelectric effect has been explained by the einstein 1905 by considering particle nature or quantized packets of light or considering the planck's law due to which he got the nobel prize 1921 then after then just after 1921 1924 de broglie proposed that proposed a theory that if light which was considered as a wave can have particle nature then every particle or matter of this world has to associated with the wave which is called the matter wave so here in 1924 de broglie proposed that if light which is accepted as the wave past few eras and now if light has the dual character that is your particle character and wave character 
then every matter every matter of this world has to be associated with the wave which is called as the matter wave and he he suggested that the wavelength of that matter will be equal to h by mv here i not given the derivation how this will be h by mv but he suggested that all the all the particles or the matters of this world possesses or associated with wave having the wavelength h by mv here m is the mass of the particle v is the velocity of the particle or this famous expression h by p p is the momentum here mv is the momentum right this is called the matter wave he proposed in 1924 right but the question is that without any evidence how this proposal is to be accepted see 1905 einstein given that light has light has a particle nature and explained the photoelectric effect but he probably proposed that every particle or matter have the matter wave having the wavelength is this small without any evidence how it will be acceptable it is not to be acceptable easily it is hard to accept so meanwhile in that time itself see here 1924 he proposed this theory 1927 davison and jormer carried out an experiment popularly it is known as davison jormer explained to explain the wave nature of the particle or matter or electron through the electron diffraction right to understand the davison jormer experiment we need to discuss somewhat about bragg's diffraction law which is based fully upon the wave theory what is the bragg's diffraction law this one the bragg's diffraction law. i am not going to go with the detail about the bragg's diffraction law according to the bragg's diffraction law when x ray will be incident on the atomic planes this is the atomic this is one atomic plane atomic plane atomic plane atomic plane then they are going to be interfere constructively this is the uh, diffracted beam or scattered beam after diffracted from the atomic plane this is the atomic plane this is the atomic plane when the x ray will be diffracted through this atomic plane and these two diffracted rays are going to be interfere with each other constructively if they are going to follow this condition 2d sin theta equal to n lambda here d is your interplanar spacing between the two planes okay lambda is the wavelength considered or incident wavelength of the x ray okay theta is the glancing angle glancing angle means this one this one this is the plane this is the plane and this is the glancing angle and this phi is your scattered angle or diffracted angle so according to bragg's law if the two diffracted rays are going to be follow this condition they are going to be interfere constructively and we are going to get the peak and we are going to get the excited peak so these are the atomic planes uh, inside a crystal and how the x ray is going to be diffracted through the uh, planes in detail i have been discussed in the video x ray diffraction you can follow that video here i am not going to go with the detail so in a in a particular material or a crystal various planes are there so when x ray is going to be incident on that material then it will be reflected or diffracted and detector is going to detect if this diffraction light or diffraction ray are going to be interfere constructively then we are going to get the this type of peak in detail i have discussed in that video i will give the link in this uh, description you can follow that video okay so this is the all about your uh, x ray diffraction condition by bragg's law so to explain the davison jormer experiment this diffraction law will be required right okay now we are going to go towards the experiment by davison jormer so this is the whole arrangement or the so called experimental arrangement 
here this is the heating filament connected with the applied voltage due to which this heating element is going to be heated and the electrons are going to be ejected from this heating element and this electron will be accelerated by this variable potential or a variable accelerated voltage the electron are going to be accelerated towards towards bottom and finally these electrons which are going to be ejected from this uh, heating filament is going to be incident on a nickel target nickel means a nickel crystal okay nickel crystal nickel crystal in which atomic planes are there atomic planes these are the atomic planes what we have been discussed in our previous slide these are the atomic planes so when these electrons with a various energy is going to be incident then the electrons are going to be diffracted in all the directions in all the directions okay so this is the accelerated voltage i discussed so here this one is your glancing angle theta and this is your diffracted angle so when the electron is going to be incident on the nickel crystal then it will be diffracted or scattered in various angles uh, like this here a movable detector is going to be put to detect the intensities of the diffracted diffracted electrons at different scattering angles like this movable detector is going to be placed to detect the intensity of diffracted electron beam so this is the uh, experimental arrangement of the uh, diffusion germa now we are going to go for the result and discussion part okay so this is the results result and discussion what he found what he found carefully you have to observe this one result this is another result first we are going to discuss this one this one okay so here from this graph what we found when the scattered angle is going to be increased from zero to a higher degree that means we this phi angle will be zero means this movable detector will be approximately here right movable detector will be here and with increasing angle that means movable detector is going to move up to this much distance this much angle so here from this graph you can observe that with increase of uh, uh, scattering angle phi scattering angle phi the intensity gradually decreases so when the zero degree the intensity obviously it will be higher because the uh, movable detector will be here will be here will be just uh, up that means all the electrons is going to be reflected back and it will be collect the higher intensity uh, at this point when theta is approximately zero but when the sorry phi will be zero when the phi is going to be increased that means when the movable detector is going to be move in this way in this way then what is happen a interesting result has been found what the intensity of the electron beam gradually decreases then increases and reaches at a peak at a particular angle at a particular angle that is your 50 degree at phi equal to 50 degree that means here when the position of the movable detect detector here the detector detects maximum intensity and here we have been considered the accelerated voltage is constant accelerated voltage is equal to 54 volt this is one result has been found what is the next result next result here we have been fixed the angle here phi angle we have been fixed they have been fixed they have been fixed phi angle 50 degree then they change the accelerated voltage from 0 to onwards and they found with increase of accelerating voltage initially the incident the, the scattered electrons intensity decreases then increases and reaches at 
maximum or a peak exactly at 54 volt here at 54 volt when accelerating voltage is your 54 volt at exactly 50 degree intensity observed maximum here at exactly at 50 degree at constant uh, scattered angle when this movable detect detector is going to be fixed at this angle and we are going to increase the accelerating voltage it is found that at 50 volt 54 volt exactly we found the a maxima so these are the two results they found from this experiment <coughs> see few books are given this data and few books are given this data both are same here you can see that in this data here you can see at 44 volt peak uh, here volt voltage is increased and here you can see uh, sorry here here phi has been increased phi in along x axis uh, phi has been increased but 44 volt you just observe this peak and at 54 volt at 50 degree uh, 50 degree the peak is sharp so if we are going to consider 50 degree and 54 volt then we found a sharp peak sharp peak so this result uh, this type of this graph and this graph has been given in different books so i suggest that you just follow this graph okay actually i i upload i am going to upload the note uh, if this question is going to be asked in your exam what you exactly are going to write okay so these two results has been found by davison and german right now now we are going to calculate uh, to find out the wave nature of the electron from this data okay so what how we are going to calculate consider the Bragg's diffraction law what we have discussed that 2d sin theta equal to n lambda is the condition in the condition see this is the diffracted of electron beam if they are going to be interfere constructively constructively then obviously the intensity will be maximum okay so by considering this uh, result we have been considered the Bragg's diffraction law that is a 2d sin theta n lambda here n we consider that is the first order diffraction first order diffraction means this one first order from, from, this is the from one plane then just below one other plane the ray has been diffracted and this is your uh, glancing angle glancing angle and this is the scattered angle or diffracted angle <coughs> n equal to 1 so this equation will be 2d sin theta equal to lambda interatomic spacing of the nickel crystal that is your d value will be equal to 0 0.91 angstrom this is the constant value we know it is it, it is it is known it is known known data that interplanar spacing between the nickel crystal the interplanar uh, spacing of nickel crystal uh, is your 0 0.91 angstrom okay now if we are going to put these values that is your d value and uh, uh, d value and sine theta value so here theta value means this theta value this theta value here we found exactly at 50 degree we found the peak 50 degree means here this is the phi the 50 degree but here in the equation theta is there theta means this theta the what will be the theta value carefully you have to observe what will be the theta value here you can see theta plus phi plus theta equal to 180 degree yes or no see this is the line this is the line so this theta plus phi plus theta will be 180 degree so 2 theta plus phi equal to 180 degree so 2 theta will be equal to 180 minus phi so here phi is nothing but 50 degree and theta will be equal to 65 degree so here we substituted theta as 65 degree so we found lambda equal to 1.65 angstrom by considering what Bragg's law of diffraction now we are going to consider according de Broglie hypothesis which is based or which is which is associated with an electron or matter or particle or which is this this hypothesis based upon the wavelength of the matter or particle okay so that wavelength is your how much h by 
टू एम इी दैट वी नो सी इफ लामा इज इक्वल टू एच बाय एच बाय पी एच बाय पी और एच बाय एम भी देन देन काइनेटिक एनर्जी वी नो दैट पी स्क्वायर बाय टू एम राइट काइनेटिक एनर्जी इक्वल टू पी स्क्वायर बाय टू एम एंड दिस काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज इज ड्यू टू द अप्लाइड वोल्टेज okay due to the apply accelerating voltage so if accelerating voltage is your va then this kinetic energy will be equal to how much e into va so here e into va will be equal to p square by 2m then p square will be equal to how much 2m into e into va then p will be equal to 2m e into va root over same thing it has been written here you have to write va okay instead of v you have to write va accelerating voltage VA and VA, right? So here you have to write VA and VA. So here, if we are going to substitute the value uh, here, H by uh, root over of two into m into e, this value will be equal to how much? Twelve point two seven. Because here H is your Planck's constant. That value is six point six four into ten to the minus thirty four joule into second. M is the electron mass nine point one into ten to the minus thirty one kg, and E is the electron charge is one point six into ten to the minus nineteen coulomb. So if I am going to put these values here, then we can find the value will be twelve into twelve point two seven. So here you have to write V A V A. Okay. So here V A value is how much fifty four because We found exactly at 54 for phi equal to 50 degree maximum peak. So only for that we substituted 54, and we found lambda equal to 1.66 angstrom. If I am going to compare this value and this value is exactly same. This value we found by considering wave nature. Wave nature. This value we found. Wave nature of X-ray, right? X-ray uh, wave or wave nature of electron beam, wave nature of electron beam. Okay, and this value we found considering particle nature, particle nature of electron. So, from both the calculation, we found lambda or wavelength of the electron approximately same. Here one point six five, here one point six seven. We can say that same. so from this result we have been concluded that at that time it has been concluded that hence the wave nature of the matter or particle has been fully confirmed from this experiment or from this evidence of this experiment uh, the wave nature of the particle or matter is fully confirmed okay and the de broglie hypothesis Is accepted easily. Actually, De Broglie hypothesis that is your lambda is equal h by m b that is his PhD thesis. Okay, at that time it is very difficult to accept. When this experiment came, his PhD thesis is accepted easily. So, uh, with the help of this experiment, we confirmed that particle or matter has wave nature. Okay. Okay. Now. If this question will be asked, suppose this question will be asked, actually this topic is belongs to your modern physics, right? So if this question will be asked, you know, exam for six to four to six mark, then the note on this topic I have been already uploaded. You can download by the link whatever given in the description. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you so much.